12. I, I just minutes ago, I was on the phone with uh, Mr. Azam Al Ahmed, the head of our delegation in Cairo, and with General Majid Faraj, our uh, intelligence chief. And they both told me that uh, everyone, everyone in this unified delegation on all Palestinian factions in Gaza are fully on board for the ceasefire. Look, Wolf, last time we spoke, you know, about the last ceasefire, there was a loophole where Israel reserved the right to destroy what this the so-called tunnel and we as palestinians reserve the right to self-defense so it was friction what we need to do to do tomorrow as of eight o'clock in the morning is to sustain the ceasefire to avoid the friction and what we do what, what we need to do is sustain and extend sustain the ceasefire for the 72 hours and then meanwhile work to extend the ceasefire beyond the 72 hours so it is sustained and extend, that's what's needed. Uh, wolf words cannot describe the human suffering, devastation, destruction, uh, loss. Uh, it's, it's a huge, huge mess in Gaza. It's, it's a total devastation. So what I'm gonna appeal tonight, I'm gonna, I, I was in touch with Secretary Kerry a while ago. I wanna appeal to the international community, beginning with the US, that what's needed as of tomorrow is a huge humanitarian aerial bridge from all nations, Arabs, Americans, Europeans, Russians, Chinese, Japanese, whoever can. We have 10,000 people wounded in Gaza. And it's beyond the capabilities of our hospitals, medical supplies, and our doctors. We don't have electricity in Gaza. We need you know, to help uh, put a new generator and also the, the water installations. And we need to begin this process of alleviating the suffering of Gazans, of Palestinians there, there are 450,000 people who have took refuge and shelter in Anurwa schools. When they're going to go back to their homes tomorrow, they're not going to have homes. There are no more homes. It's total devastation. So what we need is to create and to find temporary shelters. And that depends on the will, the goodwill and the good you know, efforts and donations of the nations who can do it. What we need to do in the 72 hours is to show the international community, you know, and, and I, I really urge the, the, the international community that can, from Europeans, Americans, Arabs, is to make sure that there are uh, limitless supplies of medical supplies, food supplies, temporary shelters, electricity grids, uh, water supplies, to the people of Gaza so we can, you know, alleviate, deal with the human suffering. Situation is really, really a total, total devastation, as I'm telling you. Now, yes, go ahead, Wolf. He wants to sustain it. He wants to, to, to hold it. He has done everything humanly possible in the last 28 days to make sure that we reach a ceasefire from day one. Uh, Mr. Kerry was working so hard, as, as did many, many others in this, uh, in this region. Uh, President Abbas, uh, you know, is on the hour, every hour, sleepless for 28 days. What we need to do tomorrow, what we need to see tomorrow, and we can do it. Sustain and extend. That's the strategy we need to do here. Sustain the 72 hours and plan to extend them. That's what we need to do. Believe me, before the Egyptian conveyed the proposals to the Israelis about 10 hours ago, everybody, everybody in Gaza was contacted, and I can tell you, everybody, all factions in Gaza are on board. Everybody is on board. I hope that the Israelis will also be fully on board, will not use any pretext, any excuses tomorrow. We need to give this a chance. We need to give this a chance. Sustain the hour every hour for 72 hours, and then we're going to have to extend the 72 hours. But at the same time, parallel, what we need to see is a very, very, very huge humanitarian relief supplies efforts to alleviate the suffering of the 1.5 million people who are in full national disaster. Gaza is a national disaster area. There is a human disaster, a humanitarian disaster in every aspect of life in Gaza. So what we need to do in parallel, sustain, work on the extension second, and at the same time in parallel, we urge the international community to provide everything humanly possible, temporary shelter, medical supplies, food supplies, electricity, water, so Gaza can see that things are beginning to change and that the international community is standing shoulder to shoulder with them and no one is abandoning them.
Well, well I, I think at, the, at this stage, what we need to have Mr. Netanyahu do is to sustain the ceasefire, extend the ceasefire, open the passages in Israel in order to get the, 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 the supplies needed to Gaza immediately. And then, what do you want to do the day after Mr. Netanyahu? This is a question for him. Are you going to continue business as usual? Are you going to continue with your settlement activities and dictation? Isn't it time for you and for us to reach an end for this occupation, an end of conflict, and get to the two-state solution once and for all? Or do we need to go back and do what you did in Gaza every three, four years? It's up to him. I mean, uh, if, if he wants to speak of a, a Palestinian state in the West Bank, Gaza is Jerusalem's capital on the 1967 line, to live side by side the state of Israel, ending his willingness, his announcement to say, I am on board, I'm saying, Saab al is saying tonight on behalf of all Palestinians, we accept Israel's right to exist on the 1967 lines. We recognize Israel's right to exist. So we need this Israeli prime minister to stand tall and say the solution is not going to be military. The solution is going to be a political one. I recognize the state of Palestine right to exist and live in peace and security on the 1967 lines. But I want this state to have one authority, one gun and the rule of law. And that's what Palestine will be all about. So we have to link this to the political horizon, to the end game, to the, to, the, to the process of achieving the end of occupation and having a Palestinian independent state whose rule will be one authority, one gun and the rule of law.